So, now uh, enter into energy balance calculations. In the energy balance calculation, uh, we will calculate what is the energy that is released by the fuel and what is the in various uh, forms the energy has been distributed. At the end of this calculation, we would uh, conclude does the 100 percent of the energy released by the fuel has been used here or not. Let us start with the uh, energy fuel uh, energy liberated from the fuel let us consider as A, then the energy that is liberated by the fuel is uh, not completely converted into work on the engine. Before that itself it has wasted in the form of exhaust because the high temperature exhaust gases are uh, leaving the engine as it is. So, it carries some energy then the water that is used to cool the engine would carry out some uh, uh, heat from the engine and through radiation. So, these are the important forms of the uh, heat loss happens in the engine. Then once the IP that is energy uh, uh, produced on the piston still it is not converted into useful work because uh, there is a loss happens through uh, friction and the pumping etcetera. Pumping loss is the loss happen uh, because the we spend some energy to compress the air and to push out the exhaust gases. So, we have to do some work for that uh, we spend some energy. So, these after subtracting these energies we what we get is brake flow that is useful energy at the flywheel. So, let uh, first uh, let us calculate what is the energy that is liberated uh, from the fuel to the engine. For that uh, so, the fuel flow we already know that is 1.74 into 10 to the power of minus 4 in kg per second and calorific value of the fuel is 44,000 kilojoule per kg. So, the answer is 1.74 kilojoule per second. Though we discuss as the energy supplied by fuel as you see it is not a uh, energy it is a power a unit of power. So, what we uh, try to assume is uh, per, per second what is the energy that is liberated from the fuel. So, the implication is by burning the fuel we had liberated 7.48 kilojoules of energy uh, every second under a given condition. So, this amount of energy we should look for how we spent in it in the engine. So, first uh, the energy is, is been absorbed as the useful energy. So, it is what is the amount of heat or heat energy that is converted into useful work we need to find out. So, for that what is the heat uh, useful work is uh, brake power by heat supplied by the fuel is 7.48. So, the brake power we know it is 1.46 kilowatts and the heat supplied by the fuel is 7.48 kilowatts. So, this get cancelled if I multiply with 100 then I would end up with 19.52 percent. So, what it implies is the only around 20 percent of the uh, energy liberated from the fuel has been uh, converted into useful work at the flywheel. Next is energy loss through coolant. So, how to calculate uh, that is uh, how to calculate the energy that was carried away by the cooling water the simple heat transfer equation we all know that is Q is equal to m C p delta T. So, what is the heat transfer that is happened to the water is uh, what is the amount of water that we circulated in the engine during testing. So, m dot that is kg per second of water and C p of water and delta T. We supplied the cooling, uh, cooling water to the engine and we the water was came out with the high temperature. So, what is the inlet temperature and outlet temperature we should get here. So, T 1 this is the temperature of uh, what we supplied to the engine. So, please recall it is a voltage and it is a degree Celsius and to convert the voltage in degree Celsius we use the formula called V minus 1 into factor that is 25. In this case voltage was 2.06 
and minus 1 minus 1 into 25 would give you 26.5 degree Celsius. Similarly, for T 5 T 6. So, for T 5 it has some error. So, after the uh, correction of error the uh, temperature is 275 degree Celsius for T 6 I show uh, for T 5 and T 6 the factors are uh, the factor is 300. So, V minus 1 into 300. So, V in this case 1.34 minus 1 into 300 would give you 102 degree Celsius. Please recall we measured the water uh, that is supplied to the engine through a rotometer in the form of volumetric flow rate that is liters per hour, but what we uh, want here is it is m dot that is mass flow rate kg per second. So, we need to suitably convert the liters per hour into uh, kg per second. So, please uh, so, this is the what uh, amount of water we circulated to the engine it is 450 liters per hour. So, 450 liters per hour. So, to convert the liters into meter cube we already discuss 10 power minus 3. So, it now it becomes meter cube to convert the hour into second we divided by 3600. So, now it becomes a meter cube per uh, second. So, to convert into kg per second it must be multiplied by uh, multiplied by its uh, density it is kg per meter cube. So, the water density is 1000. So, if you cancel out the units now you can see uh, it is converted into uh, from volumetric flow rate to uh, mass flow rate. So, the answer is so 0.125 <coughs> kg per second. Now, Cp is 4.187 kilo joules per kg Kelvin and the delta T is temperature of the water that came out and the temperature of water that went in. So, that is T 2, <coughs> T 2 is 31.75, T 1 is 26.5. in degree Celsius. So, now the answer is 2.75 kilowatts. Let us check the units here. So, kg kg cuts out here it is a delta T means it is a difference in temperature whether you put in degree Celsius or degree Kelvin uh, Kelvin it does not matter. So, delta T I put K. So, the K get cancels out. So, kilo joule per second what is kilowatts you end up with. So, the heat loss happen through co uh, jacket cooling water is 2.75 kilo joules per second. So, heat in jacket cooling water is 2.75 by heat supplied by the fuel is 7.48 kilo joules per second. Uh, both are in kilowatts, so it does not matter. So, convert if you convert this, it is 36.87 percentage. So, the implication is the energy that is developed by the uh, burning of fuel out of which the around 37 percent is carried away by the jacket cooling water, that is the implication. Now, come back to exhaust gas, we were uh, using a calorie meter calorimeter was a simple heat exchanger as I told that. So, here so what we did is we simply pass the exhaust gas in this way and we let the exhaust gas to go out. At the same time we circulated a water coolant water here and we allowed the water to go out. So, we put a sensor here thermocouple it is 
T3 uh, that uh, the water temperature that goes inside the calorimeter and T4 the water temperature that so the water would be going like this out cooling the exhaust gases. So, the temperature of the exhaust uh, water sorry the temperature of the coolant that goes out of the calorimeter is uh, termed as T4 the temperature of the exhaust gas that comes in is um, measured by T5 T5 and T6 are thermocouples not a thermocouples it is a RTDs to measure the exhaust gas uh, the temperature uh, exhaust energy carried away by the exhaust gas the same equation can be used, but this time it is m dot of exhaust gas and C p of exhaust gas and delta T of exhaust gas. Now, what is m dot of exhaust gas? that is mass flow rate of the exhaust gas. So, the amount of air and amount of fuel that went into the combustion chamber would be possibly come out as exhaust gas. So, the uh, sum of m dot air that went in plus m dot of fuel that we burnt is converted into mass of the exhaust gas and C p of the exhaust gas we assumed as 1 uh, kilo joule per kg Kelvin and delta T uh, here we did not cool here we did not cool the exhaust gas absolutely to the atmospheric temperature that is impossible because to convert the high temperature exhaust gas into room or room temperature we might need a bigger uh, heat exchanger that is not possible in a small lab. So, we uh, let the exhaust gas uh, to leave the uh, calorimeter with some high temperature. Uh, so, we to measure the exhaust energy carried away by the exhaust gas we will not consider T 6, but we consider T ambient in this case it is 25 degree Celsius. So, here the delta T would be T phi minus T ambient. Okay. So, in this case, so m dot of air is 8.85 into 10 power minus 3 plus m dot of fuel is 1.75 into 10 power minus 4 and delta T is T phi uh, T phi is 275. So, 275 minus ambient is assumed to be 25. So, this results in so it is 2.26 kilo 2.26 kilowatts. So, to convert into percentage what is the percentage 2.26 by 7.46 is it yeah 7.45 into 100 percent. So, it is roughly 30.28 percent. So, the heat energy that was carried away by the exhaust gas is around 30 percent. So, let us uh, conclude this energy balance. So, let us assume the energy liberated by the fuel is 100 percent and we will sum up the other uh, uh, energy forms. So, the it is majorly brake power plus uh, jacket cooling water jacket cooling water plus exhaust gas. So, let us calculate the B p the B p is 19.52 percent and the jacket cooling water is 36.87 percent plus exhaust gas is 30.28 percent. If you add this you come up 86.67 percentage. So, the energy we retrieved, uh, retrieved back from the fuel is around 86 uh, say let us say 87 percentage. So, the remaining 13 percent 
are considered to be the unaccounted losses. We will see what are the possibilities of the losses. The main I uh, will uh, list the factors. The first thing is the fuel uh, what we spent on uh, to the combustion might have not uh, burned completely and went away as it is. So, it is So, unburned fuel and we did not consider the pumping losses like uh, the uh, energy spent on to compress the air and to comp uh, push away the exhaust gases. So, pumping losses and the friction losses obviously, the friction losses would be converted into heat. So, the heat would be uh, split into two uh, uh, variations one it goes as the radiation the some part would be uh, taken away by the jacket cooling water. So, we consider the radiation and the observation problems so sometimes we uh, we do not uh, uh, get the uh, proper uh, the readings from the apparatuses. So, it will lead to uh, miscalculations then faulty sensors and instruments. So, this accounts for the rest of the 14 13 percent. So, this is considered as unaccounted losses. So, by this uh, we come to a end of this session. So, in this session we discuss about how to calculate the basic engine performance parameters and I try to cover the maximum parameters. Uh, moreover, in some places I covered the uh, units to for the beginners it might be awkward for the engineers, but I feel sorry for that. But as this course is meant for uh, uh, all peoples especially for the beginners. So, we use this method with this I conclude this session if you have any doubts uh, please come to the forum and we will uh, try to address it. Thank you.